Hey, what's up guys? So today we're going to continue with what makes a scene photorealistic. So in our tutorial today, I'm just going to go through three very simple concepts or ideas on what really makes a scene look photorealistic. And generally, it can be broken into three parts. They are detailed modelings, good materials, and basically good lighting control in your Unreal Engine. So let's go through a little bit about detailed modeling. You see, in, in real life, there are really very few things that look like a perfect shape, you know, a perfect square, a perfect circle, or a perfect cube. So there's always a degree of imperfection on the way things are in nature. And generally, things tend to look very organic. So when we model our models um, in Unreal Engine and when we are doing our arch vis, especially in our fittings and furnitures, they have to look uh, imperfect or they have to look organic. So, of course, the easiest way to, to, to do this is to download good models in the first place. Just like uh, in the example here, if you compare the two bits, we can very easily say which one is the one that looks more photorealistic because the first bit that is shown in the picture it looks organic it looks imperfect the the shapes are not pure shapes so so it gives a it gives an impression or it shows us that this is a photo a more photorealistic model so of course apart from downloading good models in the first place later on in the tutorial i will also teach you how to use chamfering so that edges in the models uh, can be smoothened as most of the things in real life they they don't have a 90 degree angle in terms of um, their edges so we can smooth these edges using uh, techniques like chamfering so these are just a few simple techniques but the idea is that detailed modeling is important when it comes to making a scene looks photorealistic of course the next part of making a scene looks photorealistic is on the materials themselves so achieving good materials um, is very much understanding the technology behind each renderer in unreal engine we are using physically based rendering technology so understanding how they work and the different uh, settings and of course the different uh, numbers and configurations will affect uh, tremendously how a material will look like but of course there are also other techniques that we uh, we want to look at for example um, materials in a 3d model you know it's very hard to find a, a material that is truly seamless and non-repetitive so we have to uh, explore ideas uh, or techniques to remove this repetitiveness you know like the brick wall that we can see here we can see it, it doesn't look real because because it looks so patterned you know the the repetitiveness gives it away so we have to explore ideas or, or different techniques to remove it so that as a whole the the scene will look like it's really organic you know without this kind of um, very man man-made repetitiveness and like, like what I shared, um, even for materials, we, we have to make it look organic. So imperfection is important in uh, showing how a material will, will, will look um, when eventually we render our scene. So we'll, we'll explore different techniques uh, later on in the tutorial. But as a high level understanding, what makes a scene photorealistic is these different small little details that plays in part you know and the third part of what makes a scene looks photorealistic is in the lighting so in the process of lighting um, you see in a scene there is always a direct light you know light from the sun light from a from a from a lamp you know this kind of light source but really what makes the scene looks different and looks good is actually not the direct light from the sun or from this lamp but the indirect light you know so so light bounces from these various light sources and produce shadows and 
all these soft shadows that have been bounced multiple times, um, these soft shadows created in the scene are what makes a scene look really good. So, so ambient occlusion or, or soft shadows are critical in, in, in lighting. So to make things simply, um, this term global illumination, you know, in my slides, there's a lot of big chunk of definition, you know, in, in these two slides. But basically, what is global illumination is actually the, the process of calculating this bounce light uh, lighting uh, of the multiple bounces and then generating the soft shadows and, and, and calculating these soft shadows. So this entire process is called global illumination and, and this is a very important concept in lighting. So further on to lighting, um, in, a, in a rendering of a 2D picture like V-Ray, it's relatively easier to get a global illumination because everything is static, everything is not moving, the camera is not moving. But when we come to real time, when we come to a game engine and when we are talking about Unreal Engine, you know, it, it is relatively more difficult because, you know, you are, the camera is moving, the user's perspective is always changing, you know, the shadows are always changing. So, so how do we really, um, on a high level, how do we work around this? How do we achieve this? In Unreal Engine. So Unreal Engine um, uses two kinds of lighting. One is called static, the other one of course is called dynamic. So so just a bit of introduction. What static lighting does in Unreal Engine is that um, Unreal Engine pre-computes the global illumination. It pre-computes all the direct lighting, all the indirect lighting and, and then it superimposes the soft shadows that it calculates onto the material itself. You know, so when, when you run the game, these soft shadows are pre-calculated and then put on the material. Whereas the other way of doing it is dynamic, whereby all this entire global illumination, they are calculated real time. So as you can imagine, this is very intensive on the hardware. You need a very strong graphics card for it, but uh, both have their pros and cons. The static uh, lighting, technology that Unreal Engine use is called light mass. And there's a lot of uh, technologies used in uh, Unreal Engine for dynamic GI. Um, the latest one is uh, ray tracing using R R RTX graphics cards. And of course, um, over the past few years, there have been things like LPV, you know, DFAO, DFGI and stuff like that. So if, um, for this particular tutorial, we'll be focusing on static GI. Um, if you are interested in dynamic, then please comment on the YouTube channels below. Uh, we will we will see if we can slot this in in the future. But for this, for the purpose of this um, tutorial, we'll be focusing on static lighting, because static lighting is less intensive on the hardware. It requires less powerful hardware to do, and it's more su suitable for VR. In the current technology. Dynamic GI can't really work with VR yet, so, so that's why we are focusing on static lighting for the time being. And so the last part of this tutorial, I just want to discuss a bit on light maps. Um, in static lighting in Unreal Engine or, or most game engine uh, uh, global illumination, we will come across this term called light maps. You know, um, it is one of the most painful part of static lighting, but is it is necessary. So I just want to introduce this term to you. Basically, um, a light map is just a data or a, some kind of cache that Unreal Engine used to store um, the lighting data. Remember just now I was talking about um, Unreal Engine pre-calculating all the indirect lighting and all the soft shadows. So it will, it will then store the shadow data um, into light maps of a model. So, so this is a, an important part of Unreal Engine. A lot of times you have issues with lighting in Unreal Engine because light maps are not done properly. So um, just be familiar with this term because this will pop up as we go along in our tutorial. 
So before we end, I just want to share a bit more on how you can support the channel. So first of all, um, all the PowerPoint files that we use in this tutorial, you can download it. So when you download the PowerPoint files and any project files that we give to the channel to Gumroad, your email will be um, captured by us. So we will send some marketing materials in the future if you allow us to do so. Of course, you can choose to opt out, but this will help us in our marketing efforts. Of course, um, the final UE4 project file, uh, it will be for sale as well. So if uh, it, is, it is priced at a usual tutorial cost fee, but this is absolutely not compulsory. So if you feel you want to support the channel, you can get the UE4 project file um, for a price. So all these links, uh, as we are preparing for the YouTube uh, videos, we will slowly add all these files into our Gumroad page. So some are not ready yet, some are already can be downloaded. So you can refer to the YouTube description for the links to where to download these project files. And also, I just want to share with you the way to contact us. We have a YouTube channel. Um, you can contact us directly through email. And of course, the easiest way to find us actually is through our Facebook channel. You can directly message us. So these are the links to where you can contact us. If you have any questions, you need any help, uh, feel free to just look for us. Uh, of course, um, if you can, remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button. So when we post a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lesson.